Hi, I'm Rosemary McDonald and I'm currently a Year 11 student at Scott's PGC College. Welcome to the third episode of Lion and the Thistle. In this episode, we'll be exploring the history of the Presbyterian Girls College through the late 1930s to the late 1950s. The post-depression years were a period of growth for PGC. The recovery of the Australian rural economy allowed for parents to send their children back to boarding schools. Within a few years, the PGC principal, Miss Magnus, was placed in a position of having to refuse students or place them on a waiting list as the school's following grew as steadily as the economy. In addition, this period saw the start of World War II. A war which was thought to be far away from affecting Australia had suddenly knocked on our door. This resulted in PGC unexpectedly becoming the accommodation for girls from coastal centres when war threatened Australia's coastline. A total of 150 boarders and 48 day girls were enrolled in 1942, a record number for enrolments despite the college's ability to only accommodate 100 boarders. Queensland schools were required to dig air raid trenches in 1942 and air raid drills were carried out by the students to prepare for possible air attacks by the Japanese. There was insufficient space on the Glenbrae grounds for the trenches, so the PGC girls were required to share trenches with the convent next door. The unexpected death of Alison Ewan, known as Alison de Conlay when she was the first pupil enrolled in PGC, in 1943 led to the proposal of a set of memorial gates at the Lock Street site. These gates are still a prominent feature of the PGC boarding grounds entrance and pay homage to the history of PGC. The war years were also a period of tremendous growth in the social revolution of women's roles in Australian society. Women were now filling new roles and contributing significantly to the war effort. This provoked the question that perhaps women's education would need to be reviewed to allow the possibility of such changes to become permanent. The year 1949 was the end of an era with Miss Magnus advising the College Council of her retirement. The news of Miss Magnus' retirement was met with sadness. However, she had achieved a long and successful career at PGC and is undoubtedly considered one of the state's distinguished educators. To her students, she was considered a benevolent but very firm mother figure of a very large family. Past students of PGC for several decades would continue to speak of her memory with great affection and pride. In 1950, a new principal was introduced to PGC, Miss Isabel Airely Watt Taylor. Unlike Miss Magnus, she was a keen sportswoman with a strong belief that sport played an important part in the all round development of girls. One of her achievements during her time as principal of the college is fostering an interest in sport and improving the participation of PGC in Warwick and Darling Downs competitions.
if you go to boarding school, if you share boarding school life, and you would know this too, um, it makes lifelong indissoluble bond, bonds because you've shared something, including I think a great deal of, of emotional difficulty because you're away from your family. I think society, particularly bush society then, in our childhood and now, um, recognises there's some utility in boarding schools, but it has a profound emotional effect. And so your closest people become necessarily the kids in your class that you're living with, because you're sharing all of those very challenging, but very profound and can be very creative and productive experiences. Mainly because we, be, because we were all boarders, um, we had to had to rely on each other for uh, without any family connection, and so we, they became family. Really, we kind of quickly sorted out who our friends, who had this, you know, who we were most comfortable with, and we've just stayed friends. The teachers I had at PGC were uh, quite inspiring, particularly um, Betty Crombie, who taught maths, physics and chemistry, um, and it was just so exciting. I loved every bit of it. And she was such a, a calm, um, oh, you know, res respectful sort of person, but very calm and very... Um, and she became our joint headmistress, but she was quite inspiring. And there was a Dorothy Green who taught English and uh, drama, which I was really keen about. Um, oh, she, you know, the, the drama wasn't a formal thing, it was something we did out of hours, you know, but there was a play or two every year, which was lots of fun. And she was inspiring, and she went on to um, lecture at Duntroon. And, and, you know, she's written books and there are biographies written about her. Uh, so she was really, you know, top notch and we were very lucky to have somebody who was I came from a family of all boys, all of a sudden I had girls oh, I could talk wow. to. So, so you got really, was it really exciting? Oh, it was good. No, I love I love my school years. Yes, yes, that was great. Yeah. Um, no, I think we're just great friends, that's all. And it, the friendships we made there, it doesn't matter how long you never see them, you just take up from where you left off. It might be 20 years later, but that's how it is, you know. It was just like that then. Not having had a sister, yes, I think with friends at PGC, they accepted you as you were, and you accepted them as they were. It wasn't as though they expected anything more of you, you were as you were, and that's it's a very great privilege to have a friend like that.